Hello brothers and sisters, anybody listening, Michael, humble seeker of truth for the day of Christ, part two, final warning, question mark, I think so, but uh, we'll see, we'll know when we know, um, <clears throat> yesterday was a phenomenal day for me in light of being in the word, i I woke up and prayed and uh, didn't really have a plan, didn't plan, on, again, second day in a row, didn't plan on working on a teaching and uh, Father put in my head to teach on mystery, Babylon, the great, who is it and uh, who are the false prophets that the word talks about. And so... Uh, I had studied that topic extensively. I, I mean, a lot. And I have like a notebook of notes on it. Well, I can't find them. And so I said, Father, if you want me to teach on that, uh, I need you to bring it all back to my mind and uh, order it. And, uh, and so he did. And... Um, this, I think, is going to be the first time I'm going to put two teaching videos up in the same day. And uh, my concern is that um, they don't get watched as much because there's two of them. But it isn't about me and my concerns. It is about our Father and uh, what is pleasing to Him. And it's on my heart to do it, I believe, from Him. And the revelation He gave me yesterday and, yeah, uh, depth of my soul, I believe it was straight from Him. Regarding the timing of our Lord's return and what we've already looked at is absolutely, it, it literally took my breath away um, and uh, caused tears of joy. It's some extremely cool stuff that I am so blessed and privileged to share with you. So I'm going to present you the stuff that, uh, that Father showed me in his word. I am not trying to set a day and hour, but um, it's possible that Father is. It, it, it's up to him, and if he chooses to reveal a day and hour, that, that's up to him. I'm going to show you a tremendously huge marker in how things fit in the Word of God, so we don't just guess at it. God's Word needs to declare it. That's our source, and so... Um, We'll, I'll show it to you as he has uh, inspired me to do, and we'll watch. And if that marker comes and goes, then we'll, we'll keep seeking wisdom. And interestingly, every time he has shown me a marker, uh, and it's come and gone, and I thought, you know, and I've had to learn that, uh, you know, it may not be the day of the Lord. This seems different to me, and I'm going to explain that as we go. Um, you know, where it, it very well may be the day of the Lord, uh, and certainly a high watch day. Um, but every time one comes and goes, he gives more wisdom and we add more hindsight, which was not available until that point. And so we just keep watching. That's what we're doing. And, um, let's go to the word of God. <clears throat> Let's start, and I, I've got to say there's, it is so cool to me how Father, we are a family, and we do, um, you know, hear a little and there a little. It's not just in the Word that God says that's true, where he, he covers things in pieces so we can go dig them up. He plants the diamonds here and there, and we have this huge privilege of seeking that stuff out and fellowshipping with our Father and our Lord. Um, well, we also have the same privilege with fellowshipping with each other, and that's why it's so important. So three different people messaged me. God used each one of you to, I mean, a bunch of people messaged me. Um, three people in specific led me to uh, look into this, and then Father took it from there. And uh, I'll mention y'all as we go. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so cool. It's just so cool. All right, let's start in Ezekiel 8. 
Now, if you have not watched the Day of Christ, um, look up your redemption draws nigh. A couple videos ago, I suggest you stop this and go back and watch that because this is part two. It is going to build on that. And, um, you know, this is regarding the return of our Lord and the timing of it. it it's a fairly important matter, um, like the most important matter. And uh, judgment's coming upon this world. So uh, it's it's worth going to look at. Anyway, so we're we're picking up on that. We are, some of this is going to be review from that, um, not a ton, a lot of new light, dare I say, new, uh, at least new understanding for me and hopefully for you. Ezekiel 8. Jeremiah Ezekiel. This I included uh, in one of the last couple videos. I'm not sure if it's the one I referenced. Um, and then uh, Sister Sharon, God bless you, dear sister. Um, she uh, brought up something about the women weeping for Tammuz. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about that. And... Uh, see how that plays in as well as some other things here so a little bit of review here ezekiel 8 verse 1 and it came to pass in the sixth year in the sixth month in the fifth day as i sat in my house and the elders of judah sat before me that the hand of the lord god fell there upon me this is really important to understand, and um, we have covered it, but where I'm going to go with it, we have not. How it ties together, and we are tying, Father is tying some things together here in the last hours before our Lord returns. Sixth year, sixth month, fifth day, in the sixth year is the same thing as five years done. Right? So... When we're born, we're when you're six months old, you're not a year old yet. You're in your first year. When you turn one, now you're one year old in your second year. Same thing here. In the sixth year, in the sixth month, on the fifth day is the same thing as five years old, five months old. On the fifth day, it is five, 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 triple grace. The next day then could also be considered in the sixth year, in the sixth month, on the sixth day. Father did that on purpose. It's a very unique way of saying that stuff. And it puts 555 up against 666. And it is a message. Absolutely. Um, at first when I saw it, I thought it was actually literal about trying to see how in the sixth year, in the sixth month, on the fifth day fit. It isn't about that. It's about this picture. 555 up against 666. <laughs> Uh, wow. Um, all right. We looked at Isaiah 66. From one new moon to another and one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. That is talking about believers, if not also millennial reign. So, we look at, uh, at the end in 2022, Christ walks in Solomon's port. Um, during the Feast of Dedication, we saw that's that's Hanukkah. On the eighth day, we see um, the Sabbath is on the 24th, the new moon's on the 25th. And we see this connection between them. Meeting at twilight. Okay, God's day starts when light starts breaking darkness from the very beginning in Genesis 1. Okay? And so that, those twilights, when it, it's not really night or day, those are the meeting place. That's where 555 meets 666. Okay? Now, 2019. We looked at August 2nd. 
as so we saw the ultimate marker look it must be really big information cuz yes da, 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 he made a chart <laughs> I don't know if you'll be able to see it any better than anything else but um, it is worthy of a screenshot if you can actually see it go read it I just suck at this stuff I <laughs> I'll tell you what if God can use me to get anything out there to anybody wow he truly can do anything glory to God and his son Jesus Christ so we are going to cover that information and uh, this is the first part of it so we saw this ultimate marker unmistakable the seventh of the seventh blood moon seven tetrads since Jesus Christ the last one he made seven that fell on January 21st 2019 which is also the end of his 19 year cycle that he began when a thousand years became as yesterday brothers and sisters if you're hearing this for the 25th time please understand we're about to be with our Lord and Jacob's trouble is going to begin and someone is going to hear this in Jacob's trouble it is important beyond the 99 sheep and so father leads ultimate marker January 21st 2019 now, God made the 19th letter in Hebrew. He did that to mark out 2019. He made the 19th letter in Hebrew a circle with a line down the center of it. Okay, there it is. To show a two-part gathering and to show 180. And then he gave me Revelation, the ark is an ark. The ARC is an ARK. It's a picture. So, 180 from our ultimate marker brought us to July 19th, imagine that, 2019. By the way, we've looked at Psalm 119, letter 19, and we see that it ends with verse 152, because 152 of the 153, the only sheep not homes the lost sheep. That's the end of Jacob's trouble. That's why it's 152 instead of 153. Big fish, father and his family, complete. Do you know Psalms is the 19th book of the Bible? Imagine that. All right, so that brought us to Jan uh, July 19th. I'm going to show you some other ways that God pins that out. In fact, let's cover them right now. I'm going to list them, and then we're going to get into a few of them and a lot of new stuff. So... It's 180 days from the marker, which shows us full circle. From January 21st, 2019 to July 19th, 2019. Which is 40 plus 50 plus 50 plus 40. Very important, okay? Because those 40s are what God gave Nineveh. It represents warning, and it's all warning and I'm going to show you some incredible stuff from the word, how it ties together. So, what else is July 19th? If that's a marker from the marker, as God is just emphatically telling us to watch and giving every warning, I mean, imaginable to me. Our Ezekiel 8 1 6 6 5 representing 5 5 5 against 6 6 6 and we can um, triple grace we're going devil's down having great wrath 6 6 6 number of the beast what so I'm gonna show you in the word how he's marked this stuff out but I'm gonna first talk about because what he does he put the Sun moon and the stars in the heavens for signs for seasons days and years so we can number our days regarding the return of our Lord Psalm 90 applying our hearts unto wisdom 
They're not just up there random pointing out this or that. They're they're marking out and sign posting the day of the Lord. Well, what signs have we had that stand out from God? In a nutshell, let's look at a couple of them. One of them was uh, the Revelation 12 sign. Depending who you ask, one time in human history or extremely rare, to the point that it stands out majorly. I believe it's the only time in history when you add in Jupiter being in Virgo's womb exactly 42 weeks. Going in retrograde motion and then being birthed after 42 weeks, it's, it's incredible. It's amazing. All right. From that, September 23rd, 2017, the great sign of Revelation 12. Counting that day, I believe, is day one. 665 days to July 19th. The Great American Eclipse. August 21st, excuse me, 2017. 711 days to July 19th. Well, that's 71, 1, um, and 11 represents, it is the destroying angel, 7, completion and perfection. Um, in Strong's, it means best counsel, best counseling, because God's using it as a confirmation of what we're looking at. It's why it's best counsel. It gives us wisdom, applying our hearts unto wisdom, learning to number our days regarding the return of our Lord. It also means red, red, and purple, and that is Revelation 17, 1 through 5, uh, the woman and the beast that she sits on, red and red and purple. Crimson is red. That brings us to July 19th. Okay, he doesn't just do it one way in the mouth of two or three witnesses, and in this case, more. So we have two witnesses in the signs in the heavens that point to this marker from our marker. We went 180 from the ultimate marker to get to even a bigger marker because it's closer to the day of our Lord. He's marked it five ways. Two ways in the heavens with two major events that are have his name and numbers all over them. Okay. So we theorize. Now we have we have a marker on July 19th. Yes, absolutely we do. Where do we go from there? What we saw from Isaiah 66. If if that's a correct application, one new moon to another and one Sabbath to another, then we, let's look at that. Well, that would bring us to August 2nd, which happens to be 14 days from that marker, which is two seven-day warnings. August 2nd is the new moon. August 3rd is the Sabbath and where they meet. That's what the 555666 five, five, represents again, that nautical twilight. That twilight, which is, in our case, we're looking for nautical twilight, the middle one, middle harvest. Sunrise in Jerusalem on both those days is at 555. There's our tie-in to the 555 five, five against 666 that God pointed out in Ezekiel 8.1 and then marked it with the 665 days from the great sign of Revelation 12, so we couldn't miss it. It's huge. It's huge to see it. Strong's 555, a stripping off. Thank you, Barb. Sister Barb sent that to me. It's a, it's a stripping off like clothes. Because we're stripping off this body and we're getting a new celestial glorious body like his. It also means strength. The 
the pillars of the temple, Jake, Jakin and Boaz, he has established and in it is strength. The pillars are the believers, that two-part gathering. Okay, let's go farther into Ezekiel. Ezekiel 8.13, he said also unto me, turn thee yet again, and thou... So Ezekiel 8 is God saying, oh, look at their idolatry, and it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse till the end. I didn't even include this in who is mystery Babylon the Great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. <laughs> All right. He said unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Verse 14, Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Tammuz is a fertility god that that month is named after. And there's a couple festivals, for lack of a better word, um, that have to do with that fertility god that they were worshiping in idolatry. And... Uh, Sister Sharon uh, did some research, and one of them is in July. That happens to be the month of Tammuz. Well, it's in Tammuz, which happens to be the month of July. Better way to say that. I don't think it means that the gathering has to be in the month of July, but we see them weeping for Tammuz, which definitely plays into it. Okay, so... We got all scripture has to fit like a hand in a glove, so we can't just take that one little piece and say, well, that means that it's July. I think that's a stretch. But it definitely says, hey, uh, red signpost much? Tammuz comes to a close, and August 1st is, so August 2nd is the first of Elul. August 1st is the last day of Tammuz. That's why it's worthy of note. It's up against what we're talking about. The new moon and the Sabbath. August 2nd, 3rd. Let's go a little further. Verse 15. Then he said unto me. Now this is verse 15 through 18. So now we're, uh, we're looking at Jacob's trouble here. Or the coming to Jacob's trouble. We're not quite there yet. Um, then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. And, the, and he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they worshipped the sun, S-U-N, toward the east. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. Though they cry in my ear with a loud voice, yet I will not hear them. Verse 18, because it represents both things coming. You going here, or you going into the hail? Treasures of the snow, or the, the treasury of the snow, or the treasures of the hail? Going home to be with God, or are you going into Jacob's trouble? It's a simple decision believe on the way the truth the life jesus christ the son of god who gave his life for you and the father watched his son be tortured and crucified on your behalf he took your place he took mine and he would have done it just for you he would have done it just for you that's why it's personal it's a personal relationship 
Glory to God. Thank you, Father, for your Son, Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 9, and 10. Chapter 9. He cried also in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying or deadly weapon in his hand. A deadly weapon. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate. Higher gate. Okay? All things are patterned after the true temple in heaven. The way of the higher gate. Six men. Six trumpets. The seventh trumpets of all judgments. Deadly weapons, read the trumpets. Jacob's trouble is our context. Every man with a deadly weapon in his hand, and one man among them was clothed with linen with a writer's inkhorn by his side, and they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. So, before I continue, they, we see in uh, 15 through 18, they're between the brazen altar and the porch. Why does that matter? Well, the brazen altar is where they do blood sacrifices. Oh, they did. They, they've they sacrificed blood sacrifices on their newly dedicated altar that was dedicated on the eighth day of Hanukkah last year. The porch is the porch of judgment. Very significant where they are. By the way, it's been reported, and I've seen a couple videos on it, that if you read 8, 7 through 8, 18, this, temp, this description fits exactly a temple under the Temple Mount, underground. And note, it says, he digs in the he digs a hole in the wall. It's a suggests a secret place. If you read in Matthew, if they sent him in the secret place, why word it that way, Father? Well, there is no temple yet. The third temple's got to be built in a no. Don't get hung up on that. Either it's already there, or for an awful elaborate scam, if, if that's false, those reports. This day and age could be. But then there's just something we don't understand. Okay, I've said that a bunch now. Let's keep going. So six men and one man clothed in linen. And the glory of God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was, to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the riders and corn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem. And set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof and slay the others and start at the temple and with the elders that should be feeding the cheap sheep God's truth and are not. They deny the Lord that bought them. That's a false prophet. Denying the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not about having every single thing right in the Word of God and, oh, you miss, you know, you misunderstood something. Oh, you're a false prophet. No. It's denying the Lord that bought them. Denying Jesus Christ as the Son of God, the Messiah. Yeshua HaMashiach. Glory to God. Let's keep going. And he said unto them, Defile the house, verse 7, seven seals, day of the Lord. 
and fill the courts with the slain. Go you forth, and they went forth and slew in the city. And it came to pass while they were slaying, and I was left, that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Ah, Lord God, wilt thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out thy fury upon Jerusalem? Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood, and the city full of perverseness. For they say, The Lord's forsaken the earth. He doesn't see what we're doing. And as for me also, my eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. Verse 11. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded. Glory to God. Let's go to Exodus. Let's start in 19. I'm just going to make a point here. So Exodus 19, 2019, we see the covenant made. Well, let's look at uh, verse 5. Now, therefore, if they will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then shall you be a peculiar, a set-apart treasure unto me above all people from all the earth is mine. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And this is talking about true spiritual Israel, the family of God. Verse 7 of Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. Chapter 19. Let's go to Exodus 24. As we go there, a couple pages away, I want to make a point about the 555 five, five I forgot to make. So I've said 5 is grace and 555 five, five is triple grace. And we look at Strong's and it's um, uh, stripping off and strength. Because that stuff comes by grace. The grace of God in Christ. 555 five, five is triple grace. And represents the three-part harvest of grace. Saying grace, grace unto it. <clears throat> Exodus 24, verse 12. As we look at Exodus 24, 12, I want to reiterate a point i've made a bunch of times but we haven't looked at the wonderful picture for a while okay the menorah is not a, just an object in the temple it is a key to understanding god's word and uh it's very simple okay so we see in revelation 2 1 that jesus walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks in the midst of the menorah because he is the servant candle that serves all the candles with oil, God's word and wisdom. Uh, Revelation 1.8, he says, I am the beginning and the end. And thus he also becomes the new beginning. And this represents full circle, which God uses in so many different ways, including the 19th letter of Hebrew. He just shows it that it's in two pieces. 99 sheep, lost sheep, beginning Jacob's trouble, end of Jacob's trouble. So if Jesus Christ is the beginning and the end, then we must start here. And so it goes full circle. 4 plus 1 plus 7 is 12. 4 plus 2 plus 6 is 12. 4 plus 3 plus 5 is 12. Those three 12s represent the three-part harvest model 
absolutely thousand percent first fruits main harvest corners and gleanings and we are about on the main harvest of the bride now I covered that because we're in Exodus 24 12 the second of three harvests completion of perfection 12 is completion of perfection in administration every time family is added it changes it's a new beginning he's the beginning the end and the new beginning and 12 represents it in that way so exodus oops, sit back there 24 <laughs> all right uh, from here I think we're pretty much all new stuff um, Exodus 24 is on page 70 and 71 in my Bible it's a it's incredible it's amazing I, I don't know what other words to use phenomenal there we go <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> uh, all right Exodus 24 12 and the Lord said unto Moses come up to me in the mount and be there and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written that thou mayest teach them this is the teachings of God two tables of stone why father you know what hey hey could could you put that on one because it, it'd be easier to carry and I mean we gotta go down the mountain and um it's on two because he's ever painting the same picture same picture of Solomon's temple same picture of the the olive branches on the menorah that two-part gathering the sheep the hundred sheep the first fruits were lambs okay it is amazing to there it is again I can't help it because he's so amazing Oh, if you see it. Oh, if you see it. The believers hold the testimony of God, which those tablets represent the teachings of God. And that's why it represents the two part harvest. And that's why, too, the two part gathering, sorry. <clears throat> and it's why it's Exodus 24 12 on page 71. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> All right. Uh, 24, 18. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up in the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. All right, go to Exodus 25. I just want to make a note. So we go from that, Moses getting the two tablets, to the Ark of the Covenant, because the Ark, 19th letter of Hebrew, once again, the ark is an ark or arcs same ark but two trips oh yeah you can't look at it, it behooves you to not look at one or two verses of scripture and draw huge conclusions about God's God's harvest model he paints it like a hundred different ways all through the word of God, starting with his very name. Behold the hand, behold the nail. It's in everything. It's in feeding the 5,000, feeding the 4,000. It's in the menorah. It's in the ark, the design of the ark, the measurements of the ark, the measurements of the pillars of Solomon's temple. It's all over. It's in the physical harvest model. It's unmistakable for anyone with eyes to see. Let the veil drop if you don't see it. Pray about it. It's not about me being right. It's about you being blessed. This is not 
bad news. This is wonderful news. Wait a minute. Yeah, it's just at the end of Jacob's trouble. Why do you want to believe that so badly, some of you? And you know what? If that's God's word says, I'll renew my mind to that in a heartbeat. But you can't use a few verses to negate a hundred different ways he's marked it out. The ark comes next. Go to Exodus 32. 32 once again. <clears throat> a messenger of God. You know the first time we see that? Uh, Luke, I believe. No, it's John 132. John 1, the first one. 32. The Holy Spirit descends on Jesus Christ in the form of a dove or like a dove. Because he is the first and foremost preeminent messenger of God. Yes, he has a God and Father. It says it all over the Word of God. He is the Son of Almighty God, the Beloved only begotten Son of God. And understanding that father-son relationship is paramount to understanding God. It's a father and his family, and it is all over the word. Exodus 32. Well, if this is a message, messenger, what's verse 19? <clears throat> And it came to pass as soon as he came near into the camp. So Moses comes down from the mountain on Pentecost. We're going to look at that in a minute. And he hears a ruckus. He, he's sinking more. And he gets closer and he sees it's a celebration. Because while he was on the mountain, they made a golden calf to worship. God just parted the Red Sea for him. You know, I'd like to condemn them, but then sometimes I look at my own life and I'm like, wait a minute. I mean, God is part of the Red Sea for me, and, and then I find myself in the wilderness. And he draws us back in his love and grace. <laughs> what a father we have. What a Lord. 32, 19, and it came to pass as, <laughs> as soon as he came near unto the camp, he saw the calf and the dancing. And Moses' anger waxed hot. And he cast the table out of his hands and he break them beneath the mount. He smashes the tables of God's word. Verse 19. His anger waxes hot. Picture of Bait Jacob's trouble beginning. Absolutely it is. And understanding that is key to where we're going next. And honestly, it just keeps getting better. Exodus 34. You tell me when we're done. Start in verse 1, And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first, and I will write these tables, the words that were in the first tables, which thou break. It's going to give the word again. I missed something. I'm sorry. Hold that thought. Let's go back to 32 a second. We missed verse 5 and 6. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast of the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. Verse 6, the sixth of Savan, Pentecost. Back to 34. Verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, <clears throat> Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first, and I will, I will. Whose word is it? It's God's word, which we know. 
upon these tables the words that were in the first tables which thou broke. Verse 28. And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights from Pentecost. That's exactly what he's shown us with the 180 from the marker. Do you think it's random that it falls exactly on Pentecost 40 days to July 19th that he's marked out five different ways? No, no way. No way. It's amazing. <laughs> Pentecost plus 40. It's the 40 warning, 50 and 50, 50 to Passover, 50 to Pentecost, 100 sheep, and 40 day warning again to the 19th. Go to Luke 3.22, please. Wow. we didn't have this what if God couldn't keep it intact well we do and he did <laughs> glory to God in the highest glory to his son Jesus the Christ see I know I know where this is going <laughs> Luke 3, verse 22. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. You remember this picture? This is Luke 3, 22. This is the unity of the Father and the Son. The Father is three. When we line it up with the Father and the Son, here's our 22. Because the Father in the Son, in the offspring, the noon, the heirs, the body and the head in the body. But this 3, 22, is representative of the Father in the Son. 3, 22. It also... 3 times 22 is 66. It's the main harvest or the two gatherings that we see in Isaiah 66. He constantly ties it all together. And if you think numbers aren't from God, oh my gosh, I saddens me because you're, you're missing a lot of beauty and awe of our creator, God. He could affect the words and not the numbers. He couldn't decide how he wanted this? Well, they took books out of the Bible. Yeah. You don't think God's sovereignty was over that? This is exactly how he wants it. It's his word. Understanding that and looking at, the closer you look at this, the more, the more you see it. So, Keep that in mind. In those two verses, John 1, 32, <coughs> excuse me, and Luke 3, 22. God, a chapter and verse much. The Holy Spirit. Why does God call it a dove? What's dove stand for? Well, it stands for peace and it stands for... What does God say it stands for? Holy Spirit. Clearly, it's figurative of Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and by uh, 
transference piece. Okay. <laughs> Genesis 8. We're going to close in Genesis. Remember Matthew 24, 37, as the days of Noah were, I and most watchmen have uh, contemplated exactly how God is using that. We know that he is. I see it a little differently now. I mean, we know that the flood came suddenly, and that is certainly a meaning and application of that. But does it go deeper? Let's look. We having fun yet? Because we're about to, we're about to have a banquet that we can't even wrap our minds around. Glory to God. Genesis 8, verse 6. 8, by the way, is new beginning. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made and sent forth a raven. <coughs> Sorry. Which went to and fro until the waters were dried up off the earth. The raven doesn't return. Is there a meaning there? Absolutely. I uh, don't know exactly what I haven't looked into it and maybe you do but that's not the important part verse 8 also he sent forth a dove 8 8 Genesis 8 8 new beginning stamp it much I'm starting to use that word as much as amazing <laughs> that is much amazing <laughs> Also he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. I'm going to back up. We're going to start in 6 again and we're going to read through 12. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made and sent forth a raven, which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up off the earth. Also he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her feet, and she returned unto him into the ark. For the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand, and he took her and pulled her in unto the ark. And he stayed yet other seven days. Okay, that is our first seven days. How do we know that? I mean, didn't he send the dove out for seven days? No. No. Watch. God tells us in the next verse, we just got to read carefully if we haven't picked up on this yet. And this may be old news to you. I don't know. And he stayed yet other seven days. And again, he sent forth the dove out of the ark and the dove came to him in the evening. The dove comes back the same day. Okay. So the dove comes back. Verse 11, and the dove came into him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf. So, the menorah, the two witnesses, the pillars of the temple, the two olive branches, it is representative, absolutely representative of... The two olive branches. The ark is an ark. And the dove came into him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off, so no one knew that the waters were abated off the earth. And he stayed yet other seven days. There's our second seven days. Verse 12, 
And he stayed yet other seven days and sent forth the dove, which returned not again unto him any more. It's verse 6 through 12 because it brings us to that second vav, the middle harvest, and represents completion and perfection in that number 12. Yes. Now look. And he stayed yet other seven days. That's the second seven days. He sends forth the dove, which represents what? Holy Spirit. And it didn't return again because it goes. And it goes. It is a picture of the harvest. And it pins our 40 days and our seven days plus seven, bringing us to August 2nd, slash third, the, Sabbath, the new moon and the Sabbath, where 555 meets 666, sunrise, 555 a.m. both days. We are watching for our Lord. Each and every day is high watch. But we take joy in seeking out his truths. Seeing the awe of him in it. God bless you, brothers and sisters.